If you've been on the internet at all in the past few weeks, you've probably heard of this thing called an NFT. 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 NFTs. But NFTs. Maybe you heard the story about the founder of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, selling an NFT of his first tweet for $2.9 million. Or the artist Beeple, selling an NFT of one of his pieces of art for $69 million. Like, what? What is happening here? What is going on? The hype tells us that NFTs are a way for artists to make money, that they're like collectibles but digital. They're a way for digital artists to create scarcity in an environment where it's so easy to copy work and not have to pay for it. And they have something to do with cryptocurrency or Ethereum or something. In this video, I'm going to explain what NFTs are, what they promise, and why I don't think you should buy them, despite what you may have read. Firstly, what is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token. Fungible basically means mutually interchangeable. In standard money, coin or note is mutually interchangeable with a coin of note with the same designated value. That's described as being fungible. An NFT is basically a unique digital token, kind of like a long string of numbers, which is stored on a blockchain network, such as Ethereum. That's not the only one that does it, there are others. What it means to be stored on a blockchain, we'll get back to that in a moment. Okay, so it's this little cool digital code thing, great. Why does anyone care? Why are people paying millions of dollars for them? Because you can make an NFT out of basically anything digital. Images, GIFs, video clips, music samples, whatever. And when you make this NFT, you can then sell it to the highest bidder. What they basically created is this new marketplace. So you might be thinking, oh cool, I get it, right. So it's just like a different way of buying art. So, you know, you can buy a GIF or you can buy an image uh, and then you own that. And, you know, if other people want to access it, they have to ask you and you own the rights. And if you thought that, you'd be wrong, that's that's not how it works. You don't need to own the NFT of an image or a GIF or piece of music to play it or access it. I can show Jack Dorsey's first tweet here or Beeple's piece of art, despite not owning the NFT associated with each of these pieces of digital media. An NFT is a token created to represent the thing. It is not the thing itself. If you buy an NFT of something, you own the token. You don't own the thing. It's kind of like having a trading card representing your favorite Pokemon or baseball player. You don't actually own them. So when you buy an NFT, you're basically buying a code that gives you bragging rights. The promise of NFTs. You might be thinking, wait, what? Why would anyone buy an NFT? It's not the actual thing. This is just a string of numbers. Why would anyone buy that? Now you've got to remember that almost everything has value, mainly because people believe it has value. Let's take, for example, the Mona Lisa. The original Mona Lisa is effectively priceless, but you can buy a poster of the Mona Lisa quite cheaply. Why is the Mona Lisa worth more than the poster? Well, because it's unique, it's one of a kind, it's got a lot of history associated with it, and because we all kind of believe it does. There's history, sentiment, cultural heritage, passion. And this isn't just for art, this goes for things like old video games or trading cards or old vinyl records, right? Most of the time you can experience the media that these forms represent for a lot cheaper than buying the original copy yet the originals are still worth that much because people choose to care about them. The promise of NFTs is that with this technology, artists have a way of creating an original. It's an entity and a token, sure, but you can't just copy it, which means it's rare, which means it's easier to sell. It's very hard to sell a JPEG or a video. Sure, you can put in a watermark, but people have a way of getting around that, right? As soon as you see something on the internet, it's already kind of been downloaded to your computer or your phone. Whereas with NFTs, this isn't the case. Because NFTs exist on a blockchain network, there are a few immediate advantages. Because of the distributed ledger system involved in blockchain networks, it's basically public record whenever someone buys or sells an NFT. This means it's basically impossible to fabricate ownership or steal an NFT. At the same time, blockchain networks are decentralized. There's no middleman or organization running the system, meaning that artists aren't beholden to anyone, a bank or a art dealership, for selling their work. The system's running 24 seven, there's no single point of failure, they can always access it. And the coolest part is that depending on how you generate an NFT, you can actually get a commission every single time that NFT is bought or sold. Take for example, you're an artist just starting off your career. You might sell an NFT for $100, but 10 years down the line, because you've become super famous and great, that NFT is now worth $10 million. If that gets sold for $10 million, if you've set it up at the beginning that you get a 10% commission every time it's bought or sold, you then get a million dollars just because someone else bought the NFT. In any other market, if someone buys or sells a piece of art, the artist doesn't get anything from that. The artist only gets money when they sell their original work for whatever price it's worth. Most artists don't benefit from their work becoming valuable later in life. NFTs allow them to actually actively benefit from this. And if you're a buyer, then it's even better because firstly, NFTs are secure and you can always be assured that you're buying the original genuine thing. And secondly, NFTs don't decay. They don't mold like paintings. They're not liable to break. They're just a string of digits. So NFTs might be bringing in a glorious new era for both the buyers and sellers of digital art. Might be. Why you shouldn't buy NFTs? Number one, it's not the thing. Yes, I know I said earlier that 
pretty much this applies to money as well, in that anything has value just because people believe in it. But humans are irrational in predictable ways. For a lot of art buying, it's a status thing. It's the fact that you can show off that you own an original whatever, right? With art, you can display it in your home, same goes for vinyls or vintage furniture or clothes. Owning an NFT doesn't actually change the experience of the art that you bought whatsoever. You don't own the rights to the image or the song, you just have a long string of numbers. Dude, you can generate those for free. With an NFT, because it's so hard to show off, I wonder if this actually has longevity. It's very difficult to display status with a code. Whereas with almost all other forms of collectibles, whether it's fine art, music, or what have you, these are easier to display and sort of show off and get that primal effect of, I own this. Two, there is actually an infinite supply. So every time you create an NFT, it's a completely unique token. There will never be another one like it. That is correct. But you can always make more unique tokens. So you have a GIF and today you made an NFT out of it. If in a week you decide to make another NFT out of it, sure, the two NFTs will be different, but you've made two NFTs. And it's not just you who can make NFTs, Anyone can make NFTs. This isn't like a vinyl record or an elaborate painting where it actually requires some skill or manufacturing capabilities to make these things. You can make an NFT in the next 10 minutes right now just by Googling. All this to say, there is a massive oversupply of NFTs right now. They're all unique, yes, but that doesn't make them valuable. Gary Vee has said that something like 97% of NFTs that you buy won't be worth anything in the future. I think this is closer to 99.99% in reality. And even if you buy an NFT right now, from a well-known artist. Yes, that is a unique token and there will never be another like it, but that artist can make some other unique tokens down the line, which while it won't be the same as yours, it will probably decrease the value of what you have. As an example, every Da Vinci painting is unique, right? But imagine if someone discovered a hundred more Da Vinci's tomorrow, they'd all be worth a lot of money, but chances are that a Da Vinci is not that rare now. But what if we found a thousand more Da Vinci's tomorrow or 10,000? The more common something gets, even if they're all unique, the value's probably gonna go down. Number three, this is an investor's market. I'm sure some people are buying NFTs right now because they're passionate about the new tech and they wanna support artists, and that's great. But currently, the bubble is mainly being driven by people who are buying NFTs in the hopes of selling them for more money down the line. They think they're getting in early on a tech that's gonna be here in a few decades that's gonna remain relevant. This market is mainly being driven by money, not passion for art. And this is astonishingly easy to prove. One of the main points of rhetoric around the promise of NFTs is that it gives the power back to the artist. It's a way of supporting artists. You can do this without NFTs. You can just give the artist money. You don't need to buy a little digital code. Yes, the fact that they can get a slice of every transaction henceforth is really cool. But aside from that, if you want to support the artist, there are lots of other ways of doing it. Now you might respond with, look, Jack, people just don't work that way, okay? Donating is not the same as buying. People like getting something in return even if it is a long string of numbers. What's the downside? Turns out, there's a really big downside. The real cost of NFTs. What you're seeing right now is a crypto farm. These exist everywhere, in people's houses, bedrooms, server rooms, and more. They are computers who are processing information for blockchain networks such as Ethereum to facilitate the transaction of NFTs and make some cryptocurrency in the process. Have you ever thought about how someone gets Bitcoin or Ethereum without buying it? Like. Who, who hands it out? Where does this come from? The answer is that they're generated through a process called cryptocurrency mining. Basically, people are rewarded for getting their computers to do calculations which keep the blockchain network stitched together and keep it decentralized. These machines, solving these problems globally in a decentralized manner, are essentially what allow these NFTs to be processed on things like the Ethereum network. And the problem with all this? The environmental cost. Computational artist Memo Acton calculated that the average carbon footprint of a single Ethereum transaction is around 20 kilos of CO2. But it gets more complicated when you're selling an NFT because that actually involves a lot of different transactions. By analyzing 18,000 NFT tokens, they estimated that the average carbon footprint of a single NFT is around 211 kilos of CO2. That's the same amount of CO2 we'd expect to be emitted from an EU resident's power output for a month, the amount emitted from driving a thousand kilometers, or the amount emitted in a return flight from London to Rome. The estimate doesn't include the energy consumption of creating the work or storing it or hosting it on a website. Another example, the artist Joni Le Mercier, who in the last few years has been making a point of being more environmentally conscious with their work, found that in releasing six NFTs, consumed more power in the first 10 seconds than they had done in their entire studio for two years. 
And some people are doing this on a whim. These environmental issues come from crypto as a whole. It's not just NFTs on Ethereum, it's everything. A recent study from the University of New Mexico estimated that for every $1 of value Bitcoin created in the US in 2018, it was responsible for $0.49 of damages in health and environmental costs in the US, and $0.37 worth of damages in environmental and health costs in China. And that was in 2018. Cryptos have only grown since then and NFTs are now booming in this huge bubble. And look, this has been written about in great length by lots of publications. I've got some of my favorite links in the description. Check it out, it's harrowing. But this isn't even the final point. So at this point, we've established that NFTs are just codes, there's an infinite supply, the market's just sort of driven by people who mainly just wanna make money, and there's a phenomenal environmental impact. The last question we need to ask is, who's actually making money from this? So far, the big winners of NFTs have been people who already have a lot of money. They're people with huge audiences and cultural influence. If you don't have either of those things, it's gonna be very hard for you to monetize any NFTs. Sure, you might have heard about one or two people randomly selling an NFT of some dumb drawing they made for $500, but the vast majority of people here are gonna be losers, not winners. And the winners kind of already have money. And let's not forget, that the physical art market was historically sometimes used as a way of laundering money. So it's worth thinking why there might be widespread interest from a lot of extremely rich people in a system which is extremely secure, unregulated, that could act as a vastly superior way of laundering money, surpassing the old art market in basically every way. It's just worth thinking about. In summary, right now, if you're thinking of buying an NFT, it's either because you want to support the artist or make money. If you want to support the artist, that's great, I commend you, but there are other ways of doing it, whether it's through a Patreon or buying prints or just donating to them. If you want to make money, please recognize that almost all NFTs are extremely risky investments, that most of them are going to be culturally irrelevant in a few years, much like the vast majority of every piece of content that exists on the internet. Yes, you will hear about some people who make millions of dollars, but most lottery players are losers. The only certainty that comes with buying an NFT right now is that it's harmful to the environment. And if you wanna sell NFTs to make money and you're an artist, look, I get it, you gotta make money and I wouldn't blame you for trying to do it through this means. But please recognize that it's gonna be sheer luck if you manage to sell something for a large amount if you don't already have a big cult following. And if you do have a big cult following, you probably don't need to sell NFTs. Final thoughts. Despite what I've said here, I do think NFTs are here to stay at least in some capacity. There are talks of solving the environmental impact of cryptocurrency. Ethereum 2 has been promised for a long time now, and allegedly that'll be 99.98% more environmentally friendly. And there are other uses for NFTs besides the digital art market. They could really change the way transactions happen with assurances for things like property or otherwise. NFTs could be a really useful eco-friendly technology in the near future. But today, as of filming this on March 28th, 2021, Buying an NFT is not a good idea for the average person. Yes, they're being hyped by millionaires and billionaires as a way of making money. But while they're making money, you're gonna be paying the cost. I put a lot of sources in the description if you're interested in reading more about this. I highly recommend you do your own research. Most people think NFTs are great, uh, and so I imagine most people disagree with me on this. So um, yeah, please let me know your thoughts. Uh, and otherwise, uh, yeah, have a great day. Catch you later.